deal with airplane peanuts. Amazing. Rick Diaz, on brand, on point. Well, if I judge it by my laughs per minute, I think Hans Kim would have gotten a run for his money tonight. Whoa. Oh, shit. Whoa. Oh, shit. But I mean, you're a golden ticket winner. You have, you have a spot on the show no matter what. I feel per like you're protecting him. So are you still trying to protect Hans Kim? <laughs> oh my God. What? are leaving the United States of America next week. Yes, sir. And you have one more Monday left in town. One more Monday to take a man's job. <laughs> oh my God, oh! You see that smile? How would you like it if someone came to your job and was like, hey, I could do better at your job. I challenge you. What is your official prediction for what's going to happen in your matchup against Hans Kim on New Year's Eve? Oh, I'm 100% beating his ass. In the 10 year history of Kill Tony, we have never witnessed a story quite as unbelievable as the story of Rick Diaz, who came to America for only three weeks with the dream of being on this show. Not only did Rick Diaz get his shot on stage after his name was randomly pulled out of a bucket containing hundreds of other contestants, but he also went on to receive a standing ovation and the Kill Tony Golden Ticket after performing his first 60 seconds of stand-up in the United States. He hasn't not set a punchline. It's crazy. He's Everything a he star. does is funny. This is a star. But Rick Diaz did not stop there. In fact, the craziest part of this entire story is everything that's transpired since Rick was given the golden ticket on episode 628. Oh yeah. man, this guy's dangerous, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, I right. know it when I see it. Oh, what a defined character you are. Since his debut performance, Rick Diaz has appeared on every episode of Kill Tony since and has used the massive platform to publicly call out one of the show's longest running regulars, Hans Kim. There's no inferring intent or reading between the lines when it comes to Rick Diaz. He wants to replace Hans Kim as a regular on Kill Tony and is determined to make that happen by any means necessary. Oh, oh there he goes. shit. There he goes. And he is not smiling, by the way. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my God. Let me tell you guys something. All entertainment aside, Hans absolutely hates the fact that I challenge him on his regularship. It bothers him tremendously, but he does see the results week after week after week of the pressure. It's how diamonds are created. And here you go. You have this Rick Diaz who for two weeks in a row keeps dropping your- For no reason. <laughs> A guy that I invited into my home. He played Catan with me and my girlfriend. I did a podcast with him. And th these are what Europeans are like. Don't turn into this. You are American. You have a backbone and a spine. This rivalry had been ramping up quickly over the past few weeks until now, where it ultimately reached its boiling point on episode 631, after Hans and Rick finally confronted each other on stage, and Tony officially determined they would fight for regularship on New Year's Eve in front of a sold out arena in Austin, Texas. With the future of beloved regular Hans Kim, new sensation Rick Diaz, and the entire Kill Tony show as a whole all hanging in the balance, we had to take a minute to talk to the man that started this whole thing, the one and only sad man Rick. Rick, your onstage persona is very self-deprecating and unsure of himself at times, but you've been super straightforward in calling out Hans Kim on multiple occasions now. Where does this confidence come from and is it different than your confidence on stage? That's a very good question. I don't know where the confidence comes from. My persona on stage is very self-deprecating because I have an agenda behind what I'm saying, right? So I want to be self-deprecating and I want to show that it's okay to make fun of yourself and to not take your life too seriously because we're just going to die. I'm a little bit of a nihilist, you know? So I, I really do believe that a lot of things don't really matter, that a lot of things that we attach importance to are just going to perish, <laughs> whether be either before or after us. And I think that that can seem a little bit depressing, but it, it's actually giving me a lot of confidence. But once you accept certain things in life the outcome doesn't matter like if i'm on kill tony that's a bonus i won the lottery if if i figure out that i can challenge hans kim 
I mean, I know he takes it personally because he sees it as his job. I see it as it is a competitive world where we all have to fight for anything. And he's been challenged numerous times and he's won every single challenge and he's got more experience than me. So for me, it was more about the experience of it. You're a Kill Tony fan, right? Of course, yep. So you have seen every single or almost every single previous Golden Ticket winner, right? Mm Mm-hmm. How many of them do you see regularly on the show? Just you. Yeah, that's a good point. So what's the value of that golden ticket? That Especially as a foreigner. There are at least two or three other golden ticket winners who live in Austin right now. That's interesting. Okay, we'll move on to our, our next question because it kind of plays into what you were just saying. Is it true that Hans invited you over to play Catan with him and his girlfriend? And do you feel any sense of betrayal calling him out so many times after starting like a friendship? I had met Hans Kim once for a podcast once in a show and once at a show and once when he invited me over to play Catan. And I appreciated the gesture and I do still want to be friends with him. On the other hand, does that the fact that I go to play Catan to his house mean I should forego any professional ambitions I have? If I had asked him for permission before challenging him and he had said no, then wouldn't I be a worse person for still doing it? Yeah. I'm not saying what I did isn't selfish, but I also feel like it's not that total, that unfair, especially challenging someone who, again, is filling out theaters, has been on the show for over two years, is doing great, has a great fan base. He's a great comedian. I find him to be funny, edgy, and he's pushing boundaries in what he's doing. And I don't want to take him out of the Kill Tony family. It's, that's not the purpose. I don't want to not be friends with him. I don't want to discredit him. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I've been given a chance where I was put in a position where I could do this and I'd be an idiot not to do it. 100%. And I feel like from a fan watching, it seems like Tony might like this this drama. He's a fan of WWE wrestling. It's, he always is drawing those comparisons. And as a fan, it is very exciting to see something that could actually affect the show long term playing out in real time. After you both walked off stage last episode, Tony said it's pretty much an even matchup in his head, but he does give the slight edge to Hans if it was a betting matchup in Vegas. How does that make you feel? Makes me feel like it's a completely logical conclusion. He's got eight years i've got four years he's in his home turf i'm not he's got a huge fan base i don't it's all if we had if i had to bet on who's going to win this i would bet on hands no what i'm gonna do is write my ass off and perform to the best of my abilities on that day in those circumstances i've never played a big arena you know like (laughs) so i'm gonna just gonna do my best and then it will be whatever it will be. And you notice that he's in his home turf, like you said, and he's in this uh, arena or theater setting like he's, he's used to. Do you think the winner being chosen by applause break helps or hurts you in this matchup? And has there been any talk in changing how this voting system will play out? So far, there's been zero talks into how the system will be. What I've been told Uh, before I left Austin was that it would be as any usual challenge. What I'm curious is which name will be set second and whether there will be a a recount. Like, let's say it now in the other way around. I think that would be fair. Say it both ways and say, and give it two chances, give two chances to the crowd. But that being said, at the end of the day, it is a popularity popularity contest. It is a who's funniest on that day contest. It doesn't take anything away from me believing I'm funny or, or being able to do other things with my comedy or Hans's you know, capacity to be incredibly funny and being incredibly successful before or after this. So you're back in Europe right now. How has your recent run on Kill Tony affected your stand-up career at home? Well, on on some shows, I've been given a little bit more freedom to come in and like drop in and leave and not have to stay for the entire show. But that's that's about it. I guess uh, a couple of clubs have called me to do bigger shows that they may or may not have uh, included me either way. I'm going to open for a few people that have noticed my growth thanks to all of this. But they all, we already knew each other. We were already aware of each other. It's just maybe now it's like, okay, they're, they're asking for me a little more. But I think the next few weeks and months and New Year's Eve, we'll see the ramifications of all of this later on. It's going to take months. The way I see it is even if I lose at New Year's Eve, what I have to do is do a good set, have a good interview and show that I can be funny. Mm -hmm. And then whether the crowd chooses him or me at the end of the day, what I want is 
for the people that have anything to say to be able to have a I'll be on a huge platform and they'll be able to say to say, OK, this guy's funny under pressure. And I think that no one can say that you're not taking full advantage of these great opportunities that you've been given on Kill Tony, which you've definitely earned, too. I've seen you live twice in Austin. I was there a few weeks ago and I got to see you, I think, on Tony Hinchcliffe and Friends at the Vulcan, and then at the Sunset Strip as well. And it's hilarious to see you in person. It's hilarious to see you on Kill Tony. And Hans is very funny, too, like you have already mentioned. So last question before we go here. What is your official prediction for what's going to happen in your matchup against Hans Kim on New Year's Eve? Oh, I'm 100% beating his ass. I'm taking revenge for when Korea beat Spain in the World Cup years ago. <laughs> and it was a complete unfair decision where they stole, they, they canceled goals. It was a completely unfair decision. And I don't care if I win by unfair split decision. <laughs> I don't care how, but I'm going to win this. I'd be an idiot to think any, any any other way. The official battle for Kill Tony regularship is going down in HEB Arena on New Year's Eve. But just as a preview of what we might be in store for in a few months, let's take a look at both Hans Kim and Rick Diaz's set from the last Kill Tony and tell me in the comments who you think would have won if last week would have been the official matchup. Thank you. Please laugh. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I was recently in Nashville, and I went to a museum, and I learned that in Nashville they used to have this thing called the Negro Building, which I think is horrible. Nowadays, we just call it a basketball court. You know? I don't understand these people that are like, don't get a tattoo or when you're older, it's gonna look ugly. Who are these people like, man, I might not have had any fun when I was a kid, but at least I have this pristine 70 year old body. <laughs> I've never heard anyone be like, man, I would totally fuck your grandma, but her tattoos are gross. I have been buying a lot of things through Instagram ads. I bought that purple stuff that's supposed to make yellow teeth whiter. Yeah, I've been using it on my skin. <laughs> Thank you. Well, well, well. It appears as though we have created an unstoppable monster. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I've been trying to get rid of my toxic masculinity. Uh, I really miss COVID. I miss COVID. During COVID, people were staying six feet away from me, which was closer than before. Uh, I wouldn't hurt a fly if I tried. Uh, I tried. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't, uh, does anybody here have a sexual bucket list? I can help. <laughs> I don't have a sexual bucket list. I have a sexual bucket. <laughs> and it's full. <laughs> of tears. <laughs> from Hans Kim. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've been sad man Rick. Rick Diaz. Wow. Very defined style. Uh, <laughs> again, calling out Hans Kim. I love that you want to take his job. You literally are a golden ticket winner. You get to be on the show anytime you want. But you, you would think that uh, you would never guess, right? I don't even that, live that, here. That's not. He doesn't live here. And he literally wants to take Hans Kim's job from that's him. That's what foreigners do. They take Americans' jobs. <laughs> This is gonna be very close, but go ahead and drop your winner in the comments of this video. We're gonna count all these votes up and then announce our own favorite based on audience response. It would be awesome if we could figure out how to actually place bets on this matchup. Maybe that will be possible by the time this matchup actually happens with the help from the sponsor of today's video, my bookie. Whether you're looking to bet on football, baseball, hockey, or anything else you might be into, my bookie is the place to do it. Especially if you take advantage of their 100% first time deposit bonus, which basically means whatever 
whatever amount of money you put in to bet with the first time, my bookie will give you the same amount for free, only if you type in our promo code JKWRLD. There's so much action happening in sports right now, and if you're looking to get in on the fun, look no further than my bookie for a reliable and easy way to bet. My favorite play this weekend is under 44 and a half in the Colts Jags game. Feel free to drop your locks in the comments. Again, that's promo code JKWRLD to claim your 100% cash bonus. Now back to the video. We weren't able to set up an interview with Hans Kim for this video, but to give us a little bit of insight into what might be going through his head, Hans had this to say about Rick Diaz via Instagram. Not only is Dick's comedy from the 80s, so is the way he sees other comedians. This desperate piece of Euro trash is so afraid he isn't going to make it, rightfully so, that he is willing to throw other comedians under the bus so he can get on stage and say nothing about himself. He is a single-celled organism, a cancer cell, and on New Year's Eve, I will give him a taste of American healthcare. Hans, how long have you been doing it? Ten. Oh, shit. Look how pissed he is. Some of you might not be able to see it. Maybe you need to know Hans a little bit better like I do. But that is his f***ing furious face. I mean, right now he's smiling, but you're going to see it's going to go right back to it. Watch Rick say something. Say something, Rick. Say anything. Anything at all. Hello. <laughs> It is important to note that Hans Kim has been battling for his regularship against various challengers now for almost four months. So it's not as if Rick Diaz singled him out randomly as the regular that he wants to go after. No matter who you're rooting for in this matchup, it is cool to see someone travel all this way and grab an opportunity by the balls like this, and staying determined to ride this momentum to the absolute highest potential, which at worst will be performing stand-up in a sold-out arena on New Year's Eve, and at best could mean becoming one of the new faces of the number one live podcast in the world. Thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe. At Joke World. That's it, at Joke World. And the world is WRLD. That's a great uh, YouTube channel, Joke World. Check it out.